Sangin our goal is to strive for complete enlightenment for the sake of liberating infinite kind mother sentient beings and for that reason we cultivate the altruistic motivation or what we call bodhicitta motivation and with that kind of motivation we should all participate in this teaching. <laughs> Let me remind all of ourselves the primary purpose of um, teaching, from my side teaching you uh, Dharma and from your side listening to uh, Dharma teaching. So together we are participating in spiritual uh, discourses. The primary purpose behind all of this is that we would like to educate ourselves you know, in spiritual matters concerning uh, what are the things, let's call them phenomena, uh, that uh, uh, we should uh, get rid of. And to use a technical term, uh, there are phenomena called uh, deluded phenomena, nyonmochok in Tibetan. Uh, deluded phenomena, and what are these that we should know about and we should get rid of? Uh, and there are phenomena which are called liberated phenomena, to use a technical term, namjang chok in Tibetan. And what are those, you know, liberated phenomena that we should learn about and that we should uh, uh, cultivate? So in other words, the primary purpose of our participating in the spiritual discourses is to educate ourselves you know, about those phenomena and be able to differentiate between uh, those two types of phenomena and then get rid of the deluded phenomena and cultivate uh, uh, liberating uh, phenomena. <laughs> As we, you know, learn about those different types of phenomena, again, I want to really make it very clear that uh, our goal is not to intellectualize, uh, you know, or intellectually understand those different types of phenomena as if, you know, we can theorize about them, what are liberating phenomena and what are deluded, uh, uh, you know, phenomena. 
uh, we all must pay attention to the fact that uh, these are the phenomena either we have within our own mind or the phenomena that we need to cultivate in our own mind stream. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, a deluded uh, phenomena. If we take the time to look within ourselves, within our own mind, unfortunately, if you will, that each of us has got almost every kind of a delusion that we can I mean, talk about. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's what we are talking about. We are not just simply theorizing about delusions as if these are the phenomena which exist outside or outwardly and we got to understand them. But these are the phenomena which reside in our own mind that we really need to understand and get rid of. Ranjilia <laughs> So we need to educate ourselves of or about deluded phenomena which reside within each of our own state of mind. And then we also need to make efforts to purify our mind of uh, deluded phenomena. And how can we do that? As you have heard, Kishila used the word chemicals. But there are more chemicals that we could uh, ingest into our own system and then say, okay, I'm going to purify myself of delusions. There are no such chemicals you know, that could help us do that. So the only way uh, you know, that could help us to uh, deal with our delusions is first we need spiritual education. We need to educate ourselves about delusions and, uh, you know, where they reside, and then about the antidotes to counteract those delusions. So once we have developed or gained understanding and knowledge of delusions and antidotes to delusions, then the next thing, which is perhaps the most important, is to put the spiritual, spiritual teaching into practice. We need to cultivate the antidotes within our mind, so that is the only way by which or with which we can get rid of delusions from within our mind. <laughs> So why it is a big deal that, you know, delusions or deluded phenomena reside within us. So why are we making a big deal about that, that we need to study them and then we need to apply antidotes to get rid of them, if you ask? The reason why is... Uh, because all kinds of uh, unwanted pains and problems that we have experienced in our life, that we have experienced in our past lives, and that we have been experiencing in our present life, and that we will experience in our future lives, are arise from uh, delusions within our own uh, state of mind. So again, I emphasize here that it is one's own delusions. We are really not talking about somebody's delusions. It is my own delusions which are the sources of all the sufferings I have been through, you know, from the past lives until now, that if I don't get rid of them, I will continue to suffer in uh, this and future lives. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that there um, are liberating uh, phenomena, uh, and uh, so what are they? Uh, 
To the symbol, here we are talking about the methods or the spiritual path uh, which, uh, you know, help us to be liberated from cyclic existence or samsara and the suffering, find nirvana, and eventually find a complete enlightened uh, state. So the spiritual practices or the methods and the paths which lead us to our spiritual destinations, if you will, are what we call liberating uh, phenomena. Uh, in this category, uh, we, uh, we can talk about uh, the five spiritual paths uh, which could lead us to either nirvana or complete enlightened state uh, in the footnote from the path of accumulation to the path, path of normal learning. And we can talk about the ten spiritual grounds of uh, bodhisattvas, uh, you know, again in the footnote, you know, from the path of seeing to the path of normal learning. So these are the spiritual paths and grounds which we need to cultivate within our own minds. Of course, first we need to study about them, and then we need to put them into practice. And as we cultivate these paths and grounds or progress on them, that we are able to liberate ourselves from suffering. When we talk about uh, five paths, uh, that is uh, used as a, a generic uh, term uh, to talk about uh, all kinds of paths that we can cultivate in the different vehicles or yanas of uh, uh, Buddhism, but sometimes we do talk about uh, 15 spiritual paths, that would be 5 times 3, uh, but they all have the same uh, labels or the names, if you will. So when we talk about 15 spiritual paths, what we are really basically talking about is this, that there are 5 path of Shirvaka Yan or hearer's vehicle. There are five paths of uh, Pratyika Buddha Yan or solitary realizer's vehicle. And there are the five paths of uh, greater vehicle Buddhism or Mahayan. So in that way, there are 15 spiritual paths. So although the five paths, uh, you know, in each uh, Buddhist vehicle have the same names or the labels, uh, but uh, the five, those 15 spiritual paths I just mentioned are not on the same uh, levels. Uh, they are in higher, hierarchically uh, structured. Uh, they are in hierarchical system. And that is because, you know, we can understand in terms of uh, the objects of abandonment. What do we need to get rid of, uh, you know, uh, on each spiritual path? And what do we accomplish uh, in terms of qualities on each path? So in terms of, uh, as we would say, objects of abandonment and objects of cultivation, that we can talk about how the 15 spiritual paths exist on on different uh, uh, levels. <laughs> So 
that is in a sense, uh, like in, 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 in a generic sense, uh, what do we find in, uh, you know, uh, in, in Buddhism? Uh, what kind of paths do we find in Buddhism leading to different uh, spiritual uh, goals or destinations? Having said that, now uh, there are things which are maybe directly concerned with our own life and our future. So what is really it seems to be more relevant at this point, perhaps, if we can put it that way, is each of us has to be really concerned that once we leave this life behind, world is behind, then we should see that we do, we uh, do not have to be reborn in any of the three unfortunate states of rebirth or what we call bad migrations. That that should be one of our primary concerns. So how can we prevent uh, our rebirths in bad migrations in the next life, if you ask? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, if we um, cultivate the two essential causes of uh, refuge and go for refuge in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, the three jewels, uh, that would uh, help us uh, to stop uh, that rebirth in next life. And additionally, not only that we don't want to be reborn in a bad state of existence, but we would like to find a good rebirth or fortunate rebirth. And uh, so in that regard, uh, we need to abide by uh, pure ethics or ethical codes of discipline. Uh, we need to, uh, so by the extension of that thought, so we uh, stop creating as much as we can negative comic actions or negativities, and then we purely dedicate our positive actions uh, uh, towards our uh, goal. That may get you more soon to turn it up, I say, get you the need of machine. Rally him be sent again, let that never send him shape, and they never see the Pacani, Tati, Pembertan, and Digani. <laughs> so the basic ethics uh, in Buddhism, which applies to one and all, if you will, uh, practitioners, uh, is um, to uh, abandon ten negative actions of body, speech, and mind. Now let's assume that one doesn't have a clue about each of these uh, ten negative actions about the spirit and mind. But what one can do is, uh, you know, see that one's actions of body, speech, and mind do not hurt or harm other sentient beings. And if in whatever ways we can benefit and help others, we should do that in our everyday life. But even if we couldn't literally benefit others, but at least in our mind and heart, we should keep the positive attitude and wish others to be happy, wish to bring benefits to others. <laughs> So grounded in those uh, basic, if you will, uh, practices, then we should, uh, as much as we can, cultivate uh, a renunciation or aversion to uh, the miseries in the samsara or sickly existence. <laughs> And then we should also, as much as we can, uh, you know, uh, train our mind into uh, 
equalizing and exchanging self for others. And uh, so what goes into that kind of mind training, if you will, or practice is, you know, first we try to recognize how both self and others are similar in certain ways. You know, both self and others, you know, wish for, you know, peace and happiness. So in that respect, we are just the same. There is no slightest difference. Both self and others do not wish for any kind of pain, problem, suffering, trouble, misery. In that regard, again, both self and others are just the same. There isn't even slightest difference. So by understanding um, those issues, you know, which are similar between self and others, then we train our mind to equalize self with others and then exchange self for others. Tetapi kecemburuan orang ramai sama logo pe, mungkin lepas nawa saya tang, single thorn ni, pe nawa saya sama tu, jual lain ni kadu nawa saya, saya tu sama lo, ni ramai cemburu matu, ayang ke di dulu sama sama matang pe ni change yang gua harus. So what I just said is really very, uh, I mean, important for all of us to think about and uh, try to put into practice. Because the reason why, I mean, there is, you know, so much, uh, how should I say, uh, um, issues between self and others, a lot of the time it could be because, you know, we are so preconcerned uh, with uh, our own self-interest that in our mind, you know, we do not really care about others. And uh, so not only that, you know, we don't mind hurting others, you know, if that, you know, uh, how should I say, gets us to where we want to go or fulfill our interests. But then in our actions, we implement those uh, harmful intentions, and that's how so much uh, I mean, issues, uh, uh, conflict issues, and uh, the sufferings I mean, exist between ourselves and others. Mm-hmm. Yen la tamdun ne na rang la tamdun ne is tamdun se chata yen la kasi ne ba shebe na chaka na yig rang la ne ba ne ne yung guya res kan yen la tamdun pe na yen la rang la tamdun pe na tamdun tamdun se ata yen la pe ba kasi drobe yen ti chue chay ta rang la ane ane pe ba ti jung guya res kan ang do. Uh, as experienced uh, masters have got this to say, that if we harm others, we are also harming ourselves to that extent. If we help and benefit others, it is to that extent we are also benefiting ourselves. So in other words, that what we do to others, you know, is the same as what we do to ourselves. Yes. <laughs> So what I've just explained, uh, it all goes back to uh, what Buddha originally said in sutras. Uh, as Gita quoted the uh, statements from his memory, Buddha said, uh, you will experience results according to uh, the type of actions that you perform. Actually, metaphorically, he put it, he said, you will enjoy the fruit, uh, you will reap the fruits of the seeds you sow into the field. So basically, we're talking about the same thing. What we do, our actions will bring results according to the nature of our actions. So what I just talked about I mean, so far is um, I thought those are the really uh, important things to share with you. And as I always tell you that I share these things with you, I include myself in the audience. I'm not just telling you what to do or what you should be doing, but I'm also telling myself what I should be thinking about and doing as well. No, no. Now let's go back to where we left off last time uh, in this uh, wonderful text called A Miscellaneous Collection of uh, Kadamba Geshe's Advices. 
ยิงเกสมละกึนละเทยิงกึสอะกึปะกึปะนจอสตะรังเกมสัมสะรังเดบุตะชีโบยังกะสัมนะมาตอนสมาตอนบะเชนิยิงเกสมยิงเอเดเ
and bodhisattvas, uh, they manifest in many forms and, uh, uh, you know, even in, in, in the form of inanimate objects, such as uh, bridges to cross the rivers, or in the form of water to quench thirst, that we cannot really, I mean, uh, how to say, know who is who in that regard. So therefore, it is, you know, much better and safer uh, for us to learn to respect uh, uh, each other. Quella <laughs> So the metaphor or the example given here, you know, how we, you know, respect others is as if we were their servants. You know, when we think of this example, right, the servants usually are in a lower position and respect their, uh, you know, uh, bosses. Uh, and uh, so servants don't, do not look down upon or belittle uh, the masters that they serve. They're always, you know, obedient and respectful and fulfill the needs of the masters. So like that, you know, as we were talking about, uh, you know, another day, you know, how in the eight verses of mind training uh, by Geshe Langri Tangba, that we need to cultivate you know, uh, this kind of a very humble attitude that we hold the lowest position but offer the higher positions or the highest positions to others. So when we hold the low ground, then, you see, we don't belittle others. We are not disrespectful to others. We don't look down upon others. So that's the same thing we are talking about. So we cultivate sense of humility and you know, humbleness as if we are in the service of other sentient beings. No, no. But, thank you, Dr. Gawakunas, Sayyid Tamshilas, Pamen du Shishelas, and the Puyi Shambrachis, that rang down and did end. That rang in the Sinji Tamji and the Pama in Benangis, Santa. This is a Tamas in that Sinji gained the Nibs around Pujina Yishin, and Tenzula and Pujitan to the Shambutan, that did that in the pay, Shasun Nangu or Pamis Nangu, then Nayiga, and Sinji Tamjila, and the rang it up, Puna Yiga, and it's our stand and Shambas Shakuristan. Uh, next, uh, Great Adisha tells us that, uh, you know, we should uh, see ourselves as, uh, you know, as we are the parents of uh, all sentient beings, and they are our children, and then we love them as parents would love their only child. Uh, Rally game between Tamil and Pam Rang Pamada, Kadisha to get in any D. Tin or at the time, and a Shambat Gomni. At the Shakos Ganon, those in Kojikin Doya. But another interpretation of the statement that Arisha made could be that we should see all other sentient beings as, you know, having been our parents. So when they have been so kind to us as our parents, so what is the right? way to repair the kindness as good children is, uh, you know, we, uh, I should say, uh, we cultivate loving kindness uh, to and for them. So the best way to repay the kindnesses of, uh, you know, uh, our kind uh, sentient beings is to cultivate love for them. One last touch. That was Zimpe Yintang, Zimpe Yintang, that Pan <laughs> Uh, next, um, uh, Adisha uh, says that in our everyday life, uh, we should, um, you know, uh, 
present smiling faces to others and in our heart and mind we should cultivate love and don't be mad or angry with sentient beings and in our communication with sentient beings we should uh, be honest you know should not use deceptive uh, you know tactics or modes uh, no so I mean, the, so in our heart and mind, inside, we cultivate love for sentient beings. What does it mean to love sentient beings? It means wishing them to be happy, to find uh, causes of happiness. But in our interaction with others, you know, we present smiling faces. Uh, and uh, so when we cultivate love inside our mind, we, you know, we cannot get angry with sentient beings. Uh, and uh, so in our communication with sentient beings, you know, we should not cheat them, deceive them, you know, we should not lie uh, to sentient beings. Then and the next thing I think seems to be very relevant uh, to uh, uh, us in that uh, Adishat says that um, we should not indulge in um, in uh, you know irrelevant uh, talks or discussions because that give rise to uh, mistakes and uh, confusion. Uh, we should be moderate in our uh, speech. Uh, so what it really is telling is, you know, if we kind of uh, engage in uh, like endless talks, and which uh, basically has, it's like, you know, much about nothing. Just we think like we're talking about a lot of stuff, but we're really talking about nothing. There's no relevance to what we're talking about. And basically it's sort of idle gossiping. And if we do that, then the problem is, then the confusions and misunderstandings and mistakes all come up. And so that is an issue. So we should, we should be moderate in our speech, meaning that we need to talk. Whatever we need to tell each other, we do that. But don't go beyond uh, what is uh, necessary, if you will. Thank you, Chuck Jack Chigweda. Lihunal Dungis of the computer in the tape Jagrova. No. Lapo is such as in this, a car cage in those, and they don't go dig door. No. And the honey comfort linkage of a lavity yummer than Zetina. No. Ever the toad in Yashi, Kesha 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 Kuba, Majabi Kesha, and three dig door titans. Okay, uh, I guess I want to give two examples to illustrate the point. Um, and he said, like, you know, probably he was performing some gestures as well, which you could relate to. Um, um, and he said that, you know, how sometimes people working uh, in offices, they're very busy. Their fingers are running very busy on the computer keyboards, but their mouths are very busy running, you know, talking with each other, and they're really not paying attention much to what they're doing. You know? And uh, so in such case, uh, you know, mistakes are 
are made, and sometimes the mistakes become a big issues. You know, uh, all of that uh, people in the constructions, uh, you know, who um, you know come up on the ladder, and in one hand they got a nail, and other hand maybe they got a hammer. So before they really hit the hammer on the nail, but they are just talking to each other, busy, you know, um, uh, just gossiping, and sometimes that becomes a big issue, uh, you know, between uh, between uh, people. Turn on this one, sir. So Kishra says, you know, because I said, you know, fingers are running busy on the keyboard, but it seems like the gestures he performed, he was explaining that he said, no, you are not even running. You just kind of, your fingers are ready to charge something, but you are really not. But now you are stuck in conversations and, uh, you know, talking about almost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I feel that it's really important uh, for all of us uh, to be mindful of our conversations. Uh, otherwise, you know, when we uh, engage in, uh, you know, uh, how should I say, endless talks or being big mouth, uh, then that really runs into, I mean, that I mean, makes us run into many issues and, uh, you know, problems. No, no, that's in the question. That's in Tang uh, next, uh, Adisha tells us that um, uh, if we uh, kept ourselves busy uh, doing all kinds of um, frivolous uh, activities, then our virtuous practices will suffer. And uh, so, therefore, it is better for us to stop, uh, you know, what called uh, unspiritual and frivolous uh, activities. Now, the explanation given on this line is that, of course, you know, we have to be real in the sense that we have to do our job, we need to do our work. Uh, that may not be frivolous. But then, you know, after we get out of uh, the work or the job, you know, still if we keep ourselves busy, because we can't sit uh, and do about nothing, and keep ourselves busy doing, creating all kinds of unnecessary works, if you will, and the works which have no important meanings, frivolous ones, then all the times and energies are taken by them, consumed by them, that we don't find time to do our spiritual practices. Mm -hmm. And so that is a big obstacle for us as spiritual practitioners. So therefore, we should learn to to stop engaging in uh, unnecessary and frivolous uh, activities. That trade number of a looking in a name, Demi Shower Mana, Gazo Chapi, Chimmy Shower Shows, and Chair, maybe Chair of Monday with Shower Kalina, just that trade number of a looking in a that trade of Monday with Shower Kalina, the Maji, Jagos Kanando. So someone who is completely dedicated to uh, spiritual, pure spiritual practice, you know, he or she, you know, of course, this is really taken in a strict sense, should stop doing almost everything that is worldly and uh, so, so that uh, uh, use the time and energy uh, to engage in the, uh, spiritual uh, practices. Uh, Ah, Norba Lamari, Dow to Jesus, Sonsa, Kohani, Tanyasim in Yavatendik, 
你要寻找个大的力量,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你要能够做个什么运动,你
them which are raised on them. As we I mean, often to learn about, uh, you know, the need to recognize and appreciate the precious human life uh, and its characteristics that we're enjoying now, and that we should make meaning out of our life. But if we get caught up in so many activities which are of no essence, then we are also wasting our precious uh, human life. Gang <laughs> Uh, next, um, Adisha tells us that um, we should understand that all kinds of, uh, you know, desires or the wishes or the wishing thoughts that we have may not necessarily come true because after all, what we enjoy or accomplish are based upon our karmic actions. And so therefore, uh, you know, it is better for us to, uh, you know, learn uh, to disengage, uh, you know, uh, from many uh, what called uh, frivolous, again, activities. And uh, so the Gisela's explanation on this line is, that, you know, we might be kind of a sort of a daydreaming. You know, we want to be really rich, you know, super duper rich. Uh, we want to have, uh, I don't know, a dozen of cars, uh, the best model cars, you know, in the world. Uh, we want to have, you know, not just one mansion, but a dozen of mansions around, uh, you know, uh, the country or the world. And other things. Well, it is maybe okay to wish for something, but that does not mean that our wishes will or the dreams will come uh, true. Uh, because what we, uh, you know, uh, seek and wish for, so they are dependent upon, they are contingent upon our comic actions. And in many cases, that what we did in the past. So if we did not create the necessary comic actions, simply wishing for things does not mean we will have them. Then that's sometimes, similar to the Chimbomajahilis, so therefore do not cause unnecessary mental stress upon ourselves you know learn to disengage from a lot of uh, how to say I mean actions and activities but if you learn to sort of how to say uh, distress ourselves you know not distress D stress means not to have stress um, and uh, so then you know and then we learn to enjoy the life you know we just more relaxed we are not like anxious and you know kind of a cranky and you know grumpy and you know all that because you know uh, life must go on whatever crazy thoughts we are you know we wish we are wishing for you know no time no. Kaya <laughs> And Yes. 
on the next um, Atisha uh, you know, calls upon us as Kai is the Tibetan grammatical form which addresses us like hello friends you know, if you wish um, don't do the actions uh, or things which will disappoint uh, holy and sublime beings uh, so basically that you know we should not do things that the holy beings such as enlightened beings uh, such as the bodhisattvas and other realized beings kind of feel disappointed with us thinking like, I wish you know they have not done those things you know but if you disappoint such holy and sublime beings so then it says that it is as good as we are dead you know why, why are we living you know what's the point of living and uh, so we should you men, we should, you know, not deceive, of course we can't in one sense, but we should not deceive holy beings. And the explanation given here is that we should keep our mind straight and pure. Well, that's in this, that's in this, that's in the, and it's in the, the do say, that they want to do me, that's in the, 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 ngal <laughs> Uh, next, um, it is said that whatever we experience in this life, good and bad, happy and unhappy uh, in experiences, uh, these are the result of uh, our past karmic actions. We should understand that. And then we should not blame others for our misery or for the things uh, going wrong with us. And uh, so that's really important for us to understand and think about, that uh, what we experience, much of what we experience in this life, both good and bad, are related to what kind of karmic actions that we ourselves did and accumulate in the past. So when things go wrong with us or we encounter problems, we have a tendency to blame, put the blame on others. You know, oh yeah, it's because of, you know, those... Uh, you know, my you know my family members because of my brothers and sisters, uh, because of my girlfriend, boyfriend, or the significant other, or because of my bad neighbors. You know, uh, and so we put the blame on others, and that's not right. We should not do that. We should take responsibility for our own karmic actions. that is it. Uh, next, uh, it is said that uh, you know, happiness that we experience or the goodness that we experience is uh, due to the blessing of uh, our spiritual gurus or spiritual teachers. So therefore, we should uh, repay their kindness. And um, the way Adi just stated is very uh, emphatically, he said, like, whatever goodness happens in our life, that is basically through the blessings and inspirations of gurus, and we should repay their kindness. But repay gurus' kindness does not necessarily mean that we have to make uh, material offerings to gurus or make those material gifts to gurus. Uh, the best way to repay gurus' kindness, as I often explain to you and reminded you, is to put into practice what guru teaches us. Well, 
Parlamento of Japan, Sunday, you tell a king, or a mess, you know, Lame Cadin Savia, the Dubajani, Dubajabati, Takani Savius, Kanangun. As great um, Yogi Milaraba sang in his spiritual songs, and which are recorded in the, the Lamrim uh, treatises, Milaraba sang this song. I do not have the riches and resources to repay the kindness of my spiritual father, but I repay his kindness through my spiritual accomplishment. So he really hit right on the nail. So through spiritual accomplishment, by practicing what gurus teach us, you know, listening to what guru says and doing exactly what guru says, that is the best offering, repaying kindness of gurus. That is it. Tandere ta, ta jindi rangji mathu pardus, jindji mathu vis. Rangji jindi avaj mathu vis, ane ye ke jindu ya lata kapur hez kanare. Rangji mathu vis, jindji mathu vis, na, tomar rangji tuls. Rangji te rang, rangji jindi duvi tal, tambo de ane rangji jindi duvi tal sambashi. Na te nene rambe rambe pe yin la, uh, next Adisha tells us that if one has not subdued one's own mind, then there's no way to subdue others' mind. So therefore, first one should subdue one's own mind. So this is really very, very I mean, important for us to keep in our mind that our first responsibility is to look at our own mind and we need to discipline our mind and subdue our mind. If our own mind is not subdued, thinking about, talking about, and you know, trying to do something to subdue others' mind, that is not going to work. First thing first, subdue one's own mind, and now if we can you know, help others to subdue their mind, then that should be, uh, you know, uh, that should follow from the first uh, premise. That means, you know, that should be the second step. Mm-hmm. Uh, different names of the same person said exactly the same thing uh, in uh, his great exposition of the stages of path to enlightenment, or in other words, great lumbering. Uh, we will stop there today, and um, so before we do our dedication, I have um, uh, here a prayer request uh, for Robert uh, Parkhurst. Uh, he passed away. Uh, and uh, so prayers are requested for him. And also I want to uh, once again remind you of the upcoming Tibetan New Year Losar on Tuesday, February 28th, 7 a.m. Uh, there will be a very simple uh, New Year ceremony at Tukden Darjeeling prayer ceremony and a light breakfast will be served and everybody is welcome. And for new people in the usual what happens is you know if you can get up that early, come there and have breakfast and then go to work or go to school. Uh, then uh, the following Sunday, March 5th, there will be no teaching, but we will have a lot of potluck from noon to 5, and the location uh, is posted, I believe, on the uh, TDL website, www.tdlink.com, or there might still be copies of newsletter in the lobby. And uh, so I also want to kind of make a request here on my behalf that, uh, you know, people, this is one occasion once in a while, another occasion, His Holiness birthday, where 
you know, we, uh, you know, would like to invite people to sing songs in any languages or, uh, you know, play music or, you know, tell good jokes and so that, you know, uh, we can mark the occasion very happily. So I'm just telling you that so that you will come prepared uh, for the occasion. Omo let us dedicate our collective uh, merit for the flourishing of uh, Dharma, the source of benefits and happiness throughout the universe. We dedicate our merit for the long life of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and all other holy beings wherever they are in any part of the universe. May they live long and be successful in fulfilling their visions, benefiting sentient beings. May spiritual communities throughout the world and spiritual practitioners from all traditions remain healthy, harmonious, and be successful in fulfilling their spiritual aspirations. May this and other world environments be free of all kinds of unwanted pains and problems, and beings find peace, happiness, prosperity, and spirituality. And on our magic sentient tamji, dunyiji jibale tone, sanji jikumbarum budget of jujuji. In short, we dedicate our collective uh, merit for all kind mother sentient beings to be free from the fears and dangers of two types of mental obscuration and may we all reach complete enlightened state quickly. <laughs> Sejore 